All right, in this podcast, I'm going to talk to you about molar mass and unknown metals. These are some of my absolute favorite problems to work through. So recall, molar mass, it's nothing more than the grams divided by the moles. So we're going to be looking at the grams of an unknown metal divided by the moles of an unknown metal. That's what molar mass is. And our units will be grams per one mole. So if you think about it, if I were to ask you, uh, you know, how many meters per second, per one second am I going? If I have 20 meters in five seconds, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to divide. You're going to divide 20 by 5 and you're going to say 4 meters per one second. And that's all you're doing in these unknown metal molar mass stoichiometry problems. Here's a set of rules that I want you to follow, of steps that I want you to follow to ensure your success. Step one. I want you to balance the chemical equation. And instead of putting a metal like, say, um, sodium, you're going to put an X or an M. Those are the two that I typically see the most. And it really doesn't matter what variable you choose to put in there. But instead of putting nickel, you're going to put an X or an M. And you're going to balance everything out. Stoichiometry you must start with the balanced chemical equation. Step two, write down what you know about each species. That's nothing new either. Once you have your balanced chemical equation, look at what you're given. Uh, get out the mole map if you need to and, and get a plan so you know where you're going with your computations. Step three, use stoichiometry to find moles. These problems will give you Grams, that's something you can find, whether it's a problem or in lab. You can take an unknown metal and place it on an analytical balance and get the mass. Okay, so the problems will give you the mass. And then you're going to divide the grams by the moles of the metal. Grams of the metal divided by the moles of the metal. And it's that simple. So I always implore my students when they're working through unknown molar mass problems to somewhere, wherever they're doing their work, write down grams over moles so they can stay focused on where they're trying to go because these problems are easy to kind of get screwed up and not know exactly what you're doing next. All right. And the last step and you'll be happy to know we're going to use this step in my two examples. You are going to solve for an individual element within the compound. So that's going to require one additional step in your computation. But don't worry, it's nothing too tricky. Let's look at our first example. We have 2.23 grams of lead 2 chloride, and it's being formed when... 0.944 grams of an unknown metal chloride reacts with an excess. So there's that word excess that explicitly tells you that you do not have to worry about the limiting reactant. You are being told the limiting reactant is the metal chloride. OK, then it goes on and says that this unknown metal has an oxidation state of plus three. So now you know a little bit more about the compound or excuse me, about the element. You know its oxidation state is plus three. And because it's combining with chloride, which has a minus one, you know you're going to need a subscript of three on the metal chloride, whether you use X or M. I'm using M in this particular example, all right? And then lastly, what is the identity of the metal? And that's important too. It doesn't say what is the identity of the metal chloride, which we have to find out anyways, but what is the identity of the metal? So let's go ahead and look, like, look what this will be 
when we write and balance out the chemical equation, it's nothing different than what you've done when you're writing uh, and balancing double replacement reactions anyways, except you simply do not know one of the metals. Reminder, grams over moles, grams over moles. So in this problem, look, you're given grams. You're given grams, just like I told you. You're going to have that. You can get it in lab. You can get it in a problem. Um, so we already know that we have grams. So what does this tell you? You need to find the moles of this unknown metal chloride. All right. And you know how to do that using stoichiometry and a balanced chemical equation. As you can see here, because the metal has an oxidation state of plus three, that means that I will need three chlorides to balance, all right? And then we have lead two nitrate, which we're told is an excess, and then a double replacement reaction will yield a metal nitrate along with a lead two chloride. Now, Using your solubility rules or your solubility table, you can find out that the lead 2 chloride is the solid precipitate. Sometimes these problems will say something regarding the precipitate. Remember, that's just whichever one is solid in this particular example. Okay, so when you write down what you know, well, we know that we're going to yield 2.23 grams of this, and we know that we start with 0 0.944 grams there, okay? And we're being asked, what is the identity of the metal? So think about where you can start. You... How could you, you can't start with the unknown metal. Yes, you know how much there is, but you have no idea anything else. So you couldn't do molar mass or anything. Whereas the lead two chloride, you know how much there is, all right? You know how much is formed, which means you can use that along with the molar mass to calculate the moles. So you're going to do a gram to mole. Okay, gram to mole computation here. So you know how to start that. 2.23 grams of lead 2 chloride. So give it a shot if you think you can. And I'm going to walk you through this one. 2.23 grams. And we have the molar mass, so grams on top, grams on bottom. We're going to cancel those out in one mole of lead 2 chloride. And then we have our mole ratio. And in this case here, because it's balanced, we have a 2 to 3 stoichiometric ratio. And then that takes us to the moles of the unknown metal chloride. Now, a lot of students want to keep going. Stop. You're done. Remember you are only need moles. That's it. So multiply everything on top and divide that quantity by everything on the bottom and you will get the moles of the metal chloride. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, why does he have a ridiculous number of significant figures there? There are times where I will urge you to carry out those digits. In fact, most of the time it's you would carry out most of your digits until the very end and then do any rounding um, and pay attention to sig figs then. But these problems are notorious for throwing you off just a little bit where you get the wrong identity. So I usually, in the calculator, I'll hit store or I'll hit second and answer and that'll um, bring the answer back up or write it all down if you must. But this is the value that you will put into here. And then what are you doing? You're simply dividing. Simply dividing. And that will give you 176.59 uh, grams per mole of this unknown metal chloride. Now, if this problem simply said, what is the identity of the metal chloride, you'd be done. But you are not done. 
it is asking what is the identity of the metal. So you need to be aware that you have three chlorines here. Each one has an atomic mass or a molar mass of 35.45 grams per mole. So you need to subtract out 35.45 times three from 176.59. This is a very common mistake, very common. So because it's asking for the metal only, you're going to take that number, you're going to subtract out the three chlorines, and you're going to end with 70.24 grams per mole. Now, you are always going to have some experimental error. OK, there may be some source of systematic error, of random error, but you will have some sources of error. So the next step in these problems is to get out your periodic table and look at the elements and look for the one that is closest to 70.24. All right. So if you get it out and you look, you see, OK, here's zinc, here's uh, gallium. Um, here's germanium. Uh, there's nothing else close. Nothing else close. This unknown metal is gallium. And you know what else is cool about this? If you look at the family uh, where gallium is, you will see that's in the boron family. And if you do plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one, zip, look where plus three is. It's in the boron family. That is further confirmation that we have identified the element, and it is indeed gallium. This is gallium chloride. All right, so these are pretty cool. Let's do one more, make sure you understand. Here we have a sample of a soluble metallic chloride, using X this time, and it's dissolved in water. An excess of silver nitrate solution is added, and all of the chloride is precipitated and filtered out, okay? If the original sample weighed 5 grams and the final precipitate weighed 6.85 grams, what is element X? And I've chosen this problem because we get to do something very similar in lab where I can give you some unknown metals. And you're able to basically use the chemistry to separate out the matter, okay? And you can do that by forcing a precipitate out because when you add the silver nitrate, which is soluble, and it combines with this chloride, it will precipitate out silver chloride. You can gather that, you can filter it, you can dry it and then find the mass and then use that information and stoichiometry to find out what the metal is. So let's check this one out here. Reminder, molar mass, grams per one mole, grams per one mole. And you are given the fact that your sample weighed five grams, okay? Um, so that's how much your original sample was. And so you need to use stoichiometry to find the mole, just like we did in the last example, okay? So, you need to, you are being pretty much told a little bit about the oxidation state, right? Okay, because there's two chlorines bound to this one cation, this one metal. So you should be able to um, write this all out. Silver nitrate, aqueous, um, the chloride, aqueous, and then our precipitate here is going to be the solid. And that's what I was alluding to in the last example using your solubility rules when you are told that there is a precipitate and you're being asked something about it, okay? So we know that we have 6.885 grams of this guy here and 5.000 grams there. So what do we need? We need moles of the unknown metal, okay? So we're going to, again, use stoichiometry. We're going to start with what we know. We know the mass of the precipitate. We know the formula of the precipitate, which means we can calculate the molar mass, okay? So just as we did last time, you're going to go through 
we start here, that's what we know, that's the molar mass, so one mole of silver chloride. Then we're using our stoichiometric ratios here of a one to two, and we're gonna stop, because that's all we want. Moles of the unknown metal chloride, moles of the unknown metal chloride. Notice I have a um, kept all of these digits again, and we're going to simply divide this out just as we did in the last problem, okay? Uh, molar mass, you're going to obtain an answer of 208.16 grams per mole of the unknown metal chloride. However, it is asking for the identity of element X. So we have one additional step, and once again, we have chlorine, but we only have two of them this time, so we're going to take that 35.45 times 2, subtract it out from the 208.16, and we're going to get a final answer of 137.3 with a little bit of error involved, okay? So now you get out your periodic table, and you look around for which one could be uh, the closest, and oh my goodness, 137.3, wow, this must be barium. Further af affirmation here, barium is a group two. Group two metals have a plus two charge, okay? That makes it, me feel good that this unknown metal must be barium, okay? So uh, now you see why I love these so much. I know you're going to look forward to working on this problem set and uh, practicing some of your mole-to-mole -mole and stoichiometric calculations, and I will see you guys in class.